Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you are new here, my name is Julie and I am the author of the blog CapturingWonderland.com. Boy have I got a treat for you. It is yet another furniture restoration project. I have a whole household full of them. However, this one is different because I know right off the bat that it is in terrible shape and is going to need a complete overhaul and I am 100% certain that there is no way I can salvage it without painting. So without further ado, let's just get into the processes immediately. First thing we have to do, um, I've already taken off all of the original hardware. It has gorgeous hardware. Some of it is broken and some of it is missing. I'm not sure what I will be able to use in the end product, but I'll try to use some of it. This is a very unique piece. I'm not sure that this is a dresser. I think it's more like a server or a buffet. It has two hidden drawers and two side panels that come out like doors. Super cool piece, but it has tons of damage. It has lots of water damage. Um, the veneer is chipped and broken in lots of places and in other places I'm gonna have to completely take it off and patch it with Bondo. It is missing a leg, which was not disclosed when I purchased it. I had no idea until I got it home and I realized that something was off symmetrically. I can't replace the leg. I have looked for vintage for like replacements. Like I've looked at places that do replacements for um, legs of furniture and I can't find anything that looks like that. So I will not be able to replace the leg. It's just gonna have to be uneven with the leg situation. But let's get into the stripping process. I'm very excited um, to get into this dresser. It has been sitting in my house for probably at least a year waiting for me patiently and taking up a ton of space. And this thing weighs a, a ton, it's a beast. So let's just get into this, I'm ready. Just to give you an example of what I'm talking about here, look at that water damage, veneer damage, all of this rippling here. Um, it's got it over on this side too. I'm not sure exactly what to do in this situation. I don't know if I should just completely take the veneer off or if I should try to glue it down and then fix what I can of it. I've not ever worked with a piece that has this level of problems. So this is gonna be a new one for me, so you're gonna have to be patient with the process. Although you'll be watching this when everything's complete, so yay for you. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Since I'm working on several projects at a time, I'm hoping that this part of the project will only take like an hour and then I can move on to something else because I've decided to kind of juggle projects so that I can get them done faster. So let's get the drawers done here.
So I accidentally left this on overnight. I got into making dinner and then by the time I remembered to go back to it, I was like, I'm not doing this. <laughs> so I hope it's still good in the morning. So we shall see how, how this is going to fare after being covered all night long. So I have been slowly but surely working on this a little bit every day. <laughs> Basically just clamping a new spot since I only have three clamps. So I can't do like a whole bunch of them at the same time. I have to do a little bit at a time. So basically one spot at a time is what I can do. Thankfully I don't have much left. I think I just have this rounded spot next on here and that might be all I have left. Maybe a few spots on the drawers. <laughs> yeah. But hopefully in the next couple of days I can get this dresser finished. I have to still sand down the bondo on the drawers and then do a hand sanding on all of the detail work. And if I'm honest, I'm not I'm not going to completely remove all of the stuff from the legs because no. I mean, you haven't seen the detail work on the legs, but it's intricate. So that would take me probably days just to scrape all of the um, stuff off of the legs. And we're missing a leg. So there's no real point in making, making the legs gorgeous when they're already missing something that I can't replace. So I think I'm just gonna let them blend in with the rest of the dresser and just paint them. That's the plan for now at least. We'll see how I feel later on. I may feel like stripping legs later. I don't know. I don't know why I would, but you never know. I mean, whatever. It's looking really pretty though. I'm happy with how it's turning out. I also have to get someone to help me take it outside because it weighs a literal ton and I have to sand the top. So I'm hoping to leave the top raw, but we'll see after it's sanded what it looks like because it looks like there is some darker staining on the top. That hasn't stopped me in the past, but we shall see. All right, I am back at this French buffet. I have been off of it for quite a while now. I don't think I've worked on it for the last month, maybe? I don't know, it's been a while. But it is freezing outside and so I'm about to do something really stupid, but I have no desire to try to carry this elephant out the door to then sand it outside in the freezing cold. So I'm actually gonna sand in my house and make a giant mess just for the ease of finishing this project specifically. And I also have some stripping on the legs and the bottom part. I didn't know if I actually wanted to strip it or if I just wanna paint over it because I'm gonna end up painting it anyway because there are so many details in the legs. I have no desire to spend the next month of my life taking a detail scraper to all of that. My five-year-old did my hair, so super fancy. So yeah, I have no desire to do that. So I'm thinking that I'm probably just going to leave them and paint over them. So I'm gonna get my sanding equipment and we're going to sand what we can of this. Some of it is going to require hand sanding and some of it is going to be fine with my orbital. So we're gonna get the orbital and we're gonna do as little bit as possible <laughs> so that I don't like spew dust literally everywhere, but it probably will get everywhere anyway because it's super fine. Super fine. Okay, here I go. The biggest issue I'm finding is that I'm working with extremely thin veneer. The person that I purchased this from had refinished it years before and I have a feeling that he sanded the veneer way too much when he 
refinished it. And so there's almost nothing left of it. So the sander is catching on all of this paper thin veneer and it's just crumbling off. So. Thinking about doing something weird, experimental, because I really want to keep as much of the veneer present as possible because it's so beautiful. So I'm thinking about just painting, measuring this out and doing another strip at the top and then just leaving a strip of stained veneer in the center. I think that's probably what I'm going to do because I really want to keep some of the veneer on the drawers stained, but the edges are very damaged. And so I'm going to have to paint those. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm gonna stain the whole thing and then come back in with painter's tape and make a strip e even at the top here. And I'm gonna paint it a strip all the way around. So that's my plan for the moment. I have to let this dry a little bit more before I can stain it. Let me look at what the other door looks like. And I'm thinking I'm going to do the exact same thing. Make a big strip down here. And then I'm going to leave this stained right here. This, um, this beautiful inlay. It's gorgeous. And then I'm going to stain the center in here. Just to give you an idea of how gorgeous this inlay is. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I can't believe that that was covered in shellac. It's so thick that you couldn't even see that beautiful color. No, it's kind of dumb to start on different parts of the project at different times, but um, sometimes you just have to skip ahead on certain parts just so you can feel inspired to finish the rest of it because these types of projects are so like labor intensive that you need something to drive you to finish it. Otherwise, sometimes you just feel like throwing it in a pile and lighting it on fire. intricate details down here. <laughs> Let me just include that. I am convinced that the reason why this has taken so long is because I didn't actually do anything in order. Like, I didn't have any plan coming into this. I mean, to be honest, let's let's just be fair here though. This was in pretty rough condition. Much rougher than I typically would take on. But, you know, I let the beauty of this piece take my better judgment and I shouldn't have bought it. I should never have bought it. That being said, okay. So I'm working on this drawer here and I have taped it off. My plan is, is to just tape it off and paint and I'm not going to worry about the veneer problems on the edges because I tried filling them in with Bondo but the veneer is so thin that when I sanded it down, it just dissipated. So what probably should have happened was I should have just ripped all of the veneer off of this piece. But then at the same time, much of it would have been destroyed doing that. So I'm doing what I can with what I've got. I have um, this paint that I am going to use. It is a very dark gray iron ore. So that's what I'm gonna paint around the edges. And this is what I plan to do with the whole piece, is try to maintain as much of the veneer the good veneer as I can and then paint the rest of it to try to cover it up. And typically I would turn this into chalk paint but I'm not even going to bother with that at this point. I'm just going to put it on.
not sure what I'm gonna have to do with this. I'm gonna have to fix the other one first, but I have a feeling that this entire door is gonna have to be painted. Or, yeah, door. I'm gonna try to mirror image the doors and I'm gonna do an inch and a half outline on the top here because of the fact that I have so much veneer damage over on the edges. So that's my plan. Looking really good so far. I'm liking how the lines are matching. I needed to see how things were going to come apart, come together. I'm imagining I'm probably going to paint the rest of the frame, but before I do any of that stuff, I'm going to have to vacuum because there is still sawdust all over the frame. And then so far, I'm really loving it. I'm hoping that I'm keeping the the feeling of the piece without making it too modern because I really didn't want to modernize it, but I couldn't really help painting some of it, but I want to keep some of it intact. So it's a balancing act. So I'm going to get a vacuum and I'm going to clean it out thoroughly and then we will move on to painting the rest of the frame. So I'm excited. I'm ready to get this thing finished. I just have to fix, I'm still fixing this part of the door this door right here this one is heavily falling apart and I need to bondo this and then sand it but then other than that I'm also got to paint the other one so I think what I was going to keep intact as far as wood grain is taken care of and the rest is just going to be painted so I'm excited about that let's go ahead and get a vacuum I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna come back in with a second coat on the body. I'm not too concerned about the top because I'm gonna do several coats of polycrylic on the top and I actually want to do a little bit of light distressing because I don't want it to look like a brand new piece. I want it to look older and aged and like it's been you know around the block a couple times. So all right let's let this dry and then I'm gonna come back. Slight change of plans. I actually decided I don't want to do a second coat of paint. Might be impatience or it might just be because I really am liking the look of when I'm distressing and I can see the wood through it. So I'm just taking a 120 grit sandpaper and lightly going over it like this. So I'm only distressing the wood, the painted part. I am not distressing the stake part. And it's just, lightly you really hate to get to the 
to the end of a project and then be like, I really don't like that. Um, so I'm very happy to be loving the direction that this is going in. And I think that it's, I think that I kept true to the style of it. And especially with the added, the heavy distressing that I did, I feel like it feels old. So I'm happy with that. I think that I made it, I don't know. Now I'm just waxing poetic about it. Anyway, I'm going to let this all dry and then we're gonna start on the top coat. And I still have to fix this one door off to the side and then distress this door. But I'm gonna actually save that for the very end because I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> pretty drawer. So I went through the hardware last night and this is the original hardware, but there are not enough of them intact to do the entire piece that way. So I'm having to use four small knobs and I'm hoping that these will fit in enough with it. They have a very similar look to them, but because they're more of a bronze look, I'm actually gonna use a little bit of rub and buff on them and see if I can make them a little bit more gold. And hopefully that will make them just kind of fit right in. very last task of filling in the ugliness with Bondo but it is not wobbly anymore and I have glued what I can of the veneer so I'm hoping that with a good sanding and with some Bondo it will look beautiful and you'll never know that it looked this terrible here's hoping my makeshift table, my cast iron base, which coincidentally is a project that will be coming up. And I'm just going to ugly bondo in all the cracks. this bad once I sand it and if it does I can rebondo and try again because I'm not gonna lie this is kind of a an icky process which is why I don't love this part but what I do love is the fact that this is going to look beautiful and smooth once it's all sanded down so now I just need to let it dry cure thoroughly hopefully that will be quick and then I'm gonna sand it down paint it distress it give it two coats of poly acrylic and then install it. So I'm excited. New day, I have let it sit and it is rock hard. So now I'm going to take it outside and I'm going to sand it. Of course it's cold outside now, so <laughs> that's all right. Let's just see what it turns out. I finished the sanding. This is what it looks like. So it is all sanded down smooth. There's a couple of pockets of veneer that are popping up, but I honestly think once it all dries off and I'm able to paint it and distress it, you won't notice it anyway. So I'm gonna go with it. So I'm just gonna wait until it completely dries and then give it a nice coat of paint and then move on with my life. Thank you. 
It is completely done. I could not be happier with it. It is absolutely gorgeous. I could not have dreamed of this being any more perfect than what it is. It's just one of the most unique and beautifully designed pieces of furniture I have ever seen. Personally, I've never seen anything like this before with the hidden drawers on the sides and these rounded off doors. I love it. It's like hidden storage. It was a beast. I'm not gonna lie. It was a lot to tackle, and, but I feel like if I'd have had a workshop or a garage to do it in, I could have done it really quickly. But the fact that it's so heavy and big and clunky and it took up like all of my tiny little working space over there made it go a little bit longer than I would have hoped. A lot longer than I would have hoped. But I'm so happy that it's done and I, I think it's so beautiful. I mean, you can't see the full beauty of it because of how much light is coming through into my living room. But honestly, there's not a better place for me to put it at the moment. So when, when I get to my living room, you'll be able to see it much clearer because there's no way I'm selling this thing. My husband asked me if I was gonna sell it or if I was gonna keep it. And I'm like, are you kidding me right now? I just spent like months redoing this piece. So I'm gonna live with it for a while and I'm gonna love it and I'm gonna enjoy it in my living room. But I did have to tell him that obviously some of the things in this living room are going to have to be elevated to this standard because this is an absolutely gorgeous piece. It looks like a designer piece, if I do say so myself. So I'm going to be redoing my cabinets because they're just a little bit too farmhouse now that I've got this gorgeous thing. I have plans to redo my beautiful, I don't even, coffee table. There's the word I'm looking for. So I've got two cabinets that need to be completely redone. I think I'm gonna add legs and completely paint them again. And my coffee table needs to be redone now. <laughs> I'm also planning to do a small makeover in my entry. It's a very tiny little entryway, but it needs a complete overhaul. So that's gonna be coming up. Let me know what would you, what would you like to see first? Do you wanna see the entryway first? Or would you like to see me kind of elevate the pieces of living room furniture that I have that need that need help now that this beautiful thing is living here and they just look really shabby in comparison to it. So I was also considering, I have had a couple of friends tell me that they want me to talk about the do's and the don'ts basically of buying used furniture. Like what things I look for, what things I avoid, all of the details on how to use refinishing furniture to, re to furnish your own home on a very small budget. Refinishing furniture is one of the main ways that I use to be able to create a beautiful home, my dream home basically, on a very tiny budget. So if you are interested in a video like that, sure to let me know. I'm actually thinking of doing that as the next video. So you may see it before you even really vote on it it might be here on Monday. So that being said, thank you so much guys for watching all the way through if you've made it this far. I am so thankful for all of you here um, supporting my channel and you can support it even more if you like the channel and share it with any friends you think would enjoy this kind of content. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.